Well, good day, YouTubers. Hope you're keeping well. I'm currently producing season seven of Travels by Narrowboat, but I thought uh, I'd take a break from that and I'm going to perform uh, a bit of annual maintenance on Aslan's engine, and that is changing the oil. You may have noticed, by the way, I've uh, gotten rid of my COVID hair finally. Uh, well, that's my excuse. I mean, everybody else blames everything on coronavirus. So that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Now, before I get down to actually changing the oil, uh, just a quick thing about older engines, vintage engines, and uh, the oil they use. Uh, now, a modern engine um, with much tighter tolerances and running clearances uh, requires uh, a detergent uh, engine oil, a multi-grade semi-synthetic or fully synthetic detergent oil. And the detergent runs around the engine, cleans up any gunk and carbon that builds up, and then strains all that through the oil filter. On the other hand, with an older engine, with much wider tolerances, which is why they clack and clonk and rattle and so on, and smoke a bit, you actually use a mineral oil without any detergents in it. Because an older engine, with its wider tolerances, requires uh, an actual build-up of that gunk and carbon and so on to seal the engine up. Um, if you've ever had an older engine and you put some modern semi-synth in there with a detergent, you might find, or well, more than likely you'll find, after a while, it starts dripping oil and it starts leaking out of gaskets and so on. So the oil I'm going to be using for that is this uh, that I've used before, oh, about, uh, about a year ago when I did the oil change last, and it is... Oh, where are we? It's Morris oh, Golden Film SAE 30, 25 litres there. Oh. Now Aslan takes around about 11 to 12 and the remainder, the other 13 litres or so, is going to go to another boater um, so they can do their oil change. Oh, that is so heavy. Right. So let's get down to actually changing the oil. And the first thing I want to do is warm the engine up. Uh, probably about 10 minutes, get the oil a bit warmer. Uh, so it comes out a lot easier. That is very heavy. I'm going to uh, put her in gear because uh, you shouldn't leave a diesel engine just ticking over continuously without a load on it. Now we come to actually removing the old oil. Now on a car engine you would put a drain pan underneath, undo the sump plug and whoosh, out it would come. But with boat engines, most boat engines and especially Aslan, they sit very low in the boat and access underneath to the sump is it's inches. So there's no way you can get a pan under there and undo the sump plug and drain the oil. So you have to approach it from a different angle and for this I use, and have used before, this amazing little device. It's a, uh, it's a vacuum pump. Bought this on eBay uh, when I did the first oil change on Aslan about two years ago. And uh, about 50 pounds. And it takes, it's 10 liters I think it is. And you put a pipe into the oil filler and uh, you suck away. 
And to make it easier to remove as much of the oil as I can, I've deliberately allowed the domestic water tank to run down, which has brought the bow of the boat up and the stern down, which will allow all the oil to run to the back of the engine and make it a lot easier to get it all out. Rocket science. Firstly, I'll remove the oil filler cap. Wipe the oil away. And then the dipstick. Which is all gunked up with old black oil. Then we take our tube. It's actually a piece of malleable uh, copper uh, brake and hydraulic line so it can bend and so on and there we are it's right at the bottom and now we get pumping I want to give it a good pump and it will take a, a little while but because the oil's warmed up, it will start to make its way up. And I can see it's starting to come up now, up the pipe. Right, I'm gonna leave it to do that. And uh, I'll be back when it's finished. It's a very warm day. Well, I never said it was quick, did I? Probably about half full. Well, the vacuum pump has filled up uh, to the 10 litres and there's about another litre in the engine. So I just need to decant into some old milk containers. And this is quite revolting stuff and I'm being very careful not to get any of it on my hands or as little as possible. And then we'll put it in the milk container. And what I should have done really was washed it out beforehand because it smells a bit cheesy. Well, that's two liters. So uh, I shall now extract the rest of the oil. Well, I would say we're there. Sounding a bit like a dentist's uh, Sucker. Going anywhere nice on your holiday, sir? Well, that took the best part of about three hours. Um, I could have used a larger diameter tube and that would have speeded it up a bit, but it wouldn't fit down the dipstick tube. So it's better just to leave it, do its thing, give it a good pump every now and again to build the vacuum back up, and there you are. Right, before I start putting new oil in the engine, I'm gonna now refill the domestic water tank, which will bring the bow down and uh, level up the boat and the engine to their normal level. And then I'll get the uh, right amount of oil in there.
Right, so I've removed the oil, filled the water tank, and the boat is now sitting at the sort of level and the angle that it would normally sit at. And it's now for the best bit, which is putting the new oil in. And for that, I'm going to use the jug that I uh, use for decanting all the old oil. And I've given it a good clean out. Uh, and three litres is around about there. So I'm going to put in three litres at a time. I've managed to remove um, around about nine litres. Right. Phew. Not too quick. Don't want it splatting everywhere. Ooh. Steady. It's quite restricted work this. Makes you short of breath. Right, and I shall pour that into there. You really do have to concentrate with these uh, sorts of jobs. Okay, I'll put in about another another litre because we don't want to go over the uh, marks on the dipstick because I'd have to take it out and that would just be a waste. Right. I remember I had a weird dream uh, once. I think it was the last time I'd changed the oil. I dreamt that um, there was a TV programme called Celebrity Oil Change and uh, various celebrities would uh, go to a garage and attempt to change engine oil and they were judged on how well they did it and I don't know why but uh, the winning contestant was Marilyn Manson yeah I, rem I remember presenting I remember presenting him with his trophy I think it might have actually been this jug but there you go yeah celebrity oil change so if there's a if there's any TV uh, executives out there, eh? You heard it here first. Remember that. Uh, but just on the tip, we're on the cusp. Right. So there's another probably about liter and a half in there. So I shall I shall bung in a bit more. Calls for patience with this sort of job. You can't rush it. Oil is the blood of the engine. No oil, no engine. Yep, I would say that be it. Right, with that all done, where are you going? We're flying backwards for some reason. Anyway, with that all done. <laughs> Well, with that all done, now it's time to uh, fire her up and run her for five minutes. And then afterwards I'll turn her off, let her settle for a little bit, uh, and then I'll check the oil for a final level. That's the problem with marinas. You tend to move a little bit. Right, I'll just put her in gear. There we go. Oop, backwards. Oh, 
this is good, isn't it? Well, I think that'll do it, eh? Okay, I'll let that settle five minutes and then I can take the final reading. And uh, I imagine it will be a little bit easier to read this time round because it will have mixed in with a bit of the old oil as well. Excellent job, if I say so myself. Can you see that there? Probably not. It'll probably drip everywhere, but uh, anyway, can you see that? It's all up to the top line, right by there. Ah, there we go. Yeah, just up to that top line, right by there. Nice. And there you have it. Yeah, about once a year I'd say, whether you do lots of miles or not, because the oils, the engine oil absorbs uh, moisture and so on. Um, yeah. So yeah, just a final quick word, just to recap about uh, vintage engines and uh, mineral versus modern synthetic oils and so on. Um, I'm sure there'll be uh, those of you out there that have, have vintage engines you know, of any sort, generators, pumps, all kinds of engines, and we'll say that you've um, used modern semi-synth, multi-grades, detergent oils and so on for years and years and years and years uh, with absolutely no problems. If that's the case, great. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, the, the science, I've looked, you know, read up on it, it makes sense, and I'm happy to use and spend a little bit extra you know, for some... Uh, good old non-detergent mineral oil. So there you are. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm working away on season seven. Hopefully any day now, um, episode one will go live and uh, we'll be underway. So until then, um, yeah, don't have nightmares. My name's not Nick Ross. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers for now. <laughs>